So that big story uh, came through on uh, Monday, today's Wednesday, and the central bank, that directive that was sent to the banks in the circular uh, undercover uh, is now being publicly revealed in the press. That's what we woke up to, and now it's beginning to warm its way around. And we showed you a little bit earlier how much a bit of a dent that did to the banking stocks yesterday. We showed you the massive sell-off there in at least 10 of those banks, uh, with many of them suffering uh, nearly 10% decline in share prices. So yesterday afternoon, the analysts at uh, uh, Afrinvest uh, sat down and did what they called a very comprehensive uh, green, blue, red, uh, yellow uh, color for those who will fall within the non-performing loan uh, a threshold and the capital adequacy ratio, what they call the, the MPL and CER, uh, as the central bank uh, has said so. But again, we have quite a lot of analysts also publishing their reports uh, saying that this will have some impact, as it were. Uh, very quickly, before we get bring in IODG, but from Codros Capital uh, this morning, uh, they also sent out a very three paragraph and said that they think the, the directive by the central bank would more appropriately reveal the Apex Bank's commitment to financial stability. Uh, the last paragraph says, uh, that said in our view, that the CBN's latest directive is unlikely in the medium term at least affect dividend payouts we expect from the banks covered uh, in their own report. That's from Codros Capital. But here we have the Chief Executive Officer of Afrinvest Securities. He's the Managing Director. Ayodhi Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's good to have you. Thanks for having I'm me. I'm sure you guys have a lot of uh, things on your hands <laughs> with this news in the last 48 hours. Ah, you guys, uh, what, what's been coming through from phone calls, emails, text messages from investors, home and abroad? Yes, I think one major concern from investors is why is it coming now that they feel the market is stabilizing? And um, for some of them, um, don't even, why not aware that there was, a, there was an existing role that also tries to guide or preserve the capital of the of the company, uh, of the banks rather. Um, what the focus of this um, circular is to strengthen our banks. Um, it's like, like, like a man that, um, that requires blood and is trying to also donate blood. Um, dividend is paid out of the profit you have earned for the year. That's donating, so, that's donating blood. Y yes, out of the, the um, profit you have earned for the year. So if you feel you are not that strong now, or that you don't have enough blood. You don't have enough blood. Don't then give blood. Don't pay it out. Redeploy it into, retain it as capital, and use that to grow your business. But one thing about when you study the behavior of the, the typical Nigerian investors, for most investors are after dividend. And when you look at, even when you look at other clients, um, some com companies not all companies that pay dividend. You can also earn that your return through capital appreciation. So rather than pay out dividend today and you are struggling to survive tomorrow, and that is part of what is part of the commitment of the CBN to see that our banks are strengthened. For Nigerian shareholders, dividend looks like a certainty. Capital appreciation is a little bit uncertain because they don't monitor every day, so they hardly have an idea. By the time they hear that the stock had gone up, uh, that will be yesterday, day before yesterday news. And before you put in there and say, I want to sell all that on this, perhaps the price, the price uh, I've since uh, turned red all over again. So they look forward to annual shareholders' meetings. They look to, forward to annual general meetings and say, let's say, declaration of dividend. That feel good mentality that's been there for nearly 60 years for Nigerian investors is not going to go away today. Yes, I, I totally agree. but. Part of what investors should also be bothered about is the strength of the, that's the company they are buying into. So if for this year, because of some certain issues that uh, CBN touched on, non-performing loan, you require more capital, don't, if you can't pay out this year or you can't pay as much as you used to, then you, you, are, you are asked to retain them to use for your business. And at the end of the day, it, it will dovetail to improved bottom line. This is the first time uh, since the Mephiles three year in office that he seems to be uh, uh, rattling the shareholders in the banking sector. Uh, Lamido Sanusi did quite 
<laughs> quite a bit. And it wasn't really particularly liked by Nigerian shareholders uh, uh, as, as a central bank governor because he seemed to believe that uh, he likes the banks, then the shareholders can go sort themselves out. Uh, well, a little bit of that with Soludo as well, uh, with the banking consolidation. But right now, it looks like uh, Emifele is also looking at, look, I need to preserve the banks. I need the financial system stability. Uh, you shareholders should be ready uh, to take uh, some haircut if necessary because that's the one I can cut. I can cut the banks. Yeah, but part of what we also went further to look at what the past in terms of historical dividend payout ratio because based on the classification that some of these banks will fall as a result of this circular. Yes. And you we discover that when you look at, you pick out um, Zenith as I like, in the last three or five years, average mm. of 53% payout ratio. Mm. That falls within the group that can pay as much as 75%. I think no restriction for, for Zenith, for Zenith, yes. for, Zenith for GT Bank. Uh, I'm saying for UBA as well. UBA what you access. Yesterday. So yes. when you look at for Zenith around 53%, for GT Bank around 50% payout ratio. But Zenith, um, UBA and access is around 30% payout ratio. Though, though they fall into the group that has no limitation. So... It's when you look at, you, we need to look at into details of how in, in, in the past three or five years, what has been that payout ratio. So for banks that are falling within the threshold of those banks that can't pay more than 30% out of their profit, when you check their historical dividend payout, still tallies with what they have been paying in, um, in the past. And for some companies uh, or for some banks or stocks that are listed, they, are old, they have old in structure. In the past, we've seen, for instance, First Bank has paid through, um, based on the earnings from its subsidiaries in the past. So uh, First Bank that falls into the category that may be likely as the bank not be able to pay dividend out of the bank earnings. But if you recall, First Bank holdings that is listed on the stock exchange is a group. So yes. we may be able to pay from the earnings from other subsidiaries. Where, which I think was, was exactly what mm. was done last year. Mm. Mm. Okay, I, I can see that. Uh, your report here, which I'm sure has been creating a lot of uh, uh, fireworks since yesterday, uh, I guess that was on Twitter, uh, that although First Bank is a breaching regulatory benchmark, but the FBNH, which is, which is a financial services mm. group listed on the exchange, may still be able to pay dividends from other subsidiaries. But I'm seeing the green, the red, and the orange, and a little bit of uh, those who are uh, a bit of a brown, uh, the reds are not qualified to pay dividends. So I'm looking at the tier two banks here. I'm looking at Diamond, FCMB, Fidelity, Stambik, IBTC, uh, Union Bank, and Wema. Yeah, I think from that group, um, FCMB falls within the group that cannot pay more than 30%. Cannot pay more than 30%? 30%, 30 of, its, of, of, of its earnings. Of its earnings. Yes. But for Wema, when you check historically, um, last three to five years, dividend payout ratio has been zero. But I know last year the management did some capital reduction or reconstruction for, for the bank to be able to pay out dividend from its, um, from its earnings. So, um, and based on the analysis, it's the nine months. We're also expecting for some that have maybe in terms of their non-performing known around within the 5 to 10 percent, depending on how they've been able to restructure some of these loans, depending on how some of those loans are now become active or performing, then a full year for some of them may be out of this particular group that cannot pay dividend, depending on. But um, when you check some of those ratios that are significantly higher than even the threshold, then it takes, and when you look at in terms of the weightings of, for those that are holdings, and you look at their weightings as, as a bank, relative to the total group. So most times the ratios that you see from that particular bank will not have any significant dilution when you look at the ratios of the, of the group. Yes. Um, if we still go down this uh, a very uh, lovely uh, table you folks did, the, uh, there's a, for Union Bank, uh, it says there's a, uh, on flattening the minimum capital equity requirement, Union Bank cannot pay dividend. That was, you say, in your report. Yeah, based on nine months result, but you will also recall that uh, last year Union Bank raised about 50 billion naira through rights issue. Exactly. So by the time you also factor that in, and the essence of that is to recapitalize. So they saw that's being proactive. Okay. So we, by, by, by year end, they may be able to pay 
dividend. And I know boy, when you look at historical um, dividend payments, Union Bank has not been um, among those banks that literally pay dividend in Nigeria. And you see, based on earlier converse, conversation on the um, behavior of um, Nigerians, Nigerian investors on dividend paying stocks, that's part of what investors have also been pricing in on some of those stocks that don't pay dividend annually. I'm moving to Stambic. Uh, Stambic IBTC, uh, and your conclusion here remarking from, uh, from Afrinvest is that given the uh, non-performing uh, loans level, Stambic only qualifies for maximum of 75% payout ratio. Do you think Stambic has been able to uh, clear off some of those issues it had in 2014, 2015, and now should be able to pay at least 75%? Yeah, but um, if you also look at falling between 75%, it's still within the, when you check historical payout ratio, has been around 30%. So for, for, for Stambic Holdings, it, it still falls within its, um, the threshold well, its of policy is threshold of mm. what it's paying out. So mm. that we shouldn't expect any reduction in terms of a uh, reduction in the payout ratio as a result of this policy. Well, but I found out that a few banks are not even here at all. In terms of Unity Bank, for example, and Sky Bank. Yes, um, I know they're still, um, the CBN is working a lot to see how they can um, um, recapitalize. We know we are, we are aware of Sky Bank. Um, Unity Bank, based on the last result, I think has even negative um, capital adequacy ratio. Um, but because we don't have sufficient details in terms of the financial information on Unity, that's part of why we try to exclude so that we don't um, put out an information that is not accurate. So for those banks that are still struggling, um, you can't be struggling to survive uh, in terms of based on your capital adequacy ratio, not based on liquidity. So not that they are defaulting on their loan, not paying in terms of deposits. They are not um, giving, uh, paying out uh, deposits to, client, to their clients. Or so when so you this want to is not a liquidity. So it is not a liquidity. So we have to clarify that. It's yes. not for, a liquidity for the public. For the public, for the public yes. This is not a liquidity None of these banks ratio. have liquidity issues. issues. But mm -hmm. what the bank is just trying to, uh, the CBN, Central Bank, is trying to do is to be proactive and to strengthen some of these banks. So having 16% uh, capital adequacy ratio, minimum capital adequacy ratio for systemically important banks. Mm -hmm. Because then when it, uh, about eight banks were classified as systemically important banks, that if they, any of them fail or go under would affect the whole economy in terms of number of employees that they have, in terms of deposit size, um, loan size that they have in the economy. So they are required to have minimum of 16%. It's just a, a way to strengthen, have enough capital, so that if you have any sh major shock globally, either your exposure to the oil and gas space, to the power sector, you are able to absorb this shock and investors or customers don't lose their deposits. So mo but for mo most all the banks are able to um, meet up with their obligations. So none of them have any liquidity issue in terms of paying customers' deposits. So if, um, I think um, our viewers should be able to distinguish. So to distinguish, yes, the, uh, what is, uh, is a dividend payout issue yes. and not a liquidity uh, ratio uh, issue. I I'm sure we're all getting that uh, right now into what is happening. We will continue this conversation after the break with Ayo Dijiebo, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Afrinvest Securities. We're going to uh, take a look back into the Afrinvest Banking Report of 2018, which was released a few days, uh, if, uh, about a month or two ago, and see what we can gather from there uh, to look at the direction of the Nigerian banking industry moving forward. Very important banking sector conversation with Ayodhya Jiebo, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Afrinvest Securities. Let's continue that. Uh, yesterday we saw a bit of a, uh, a sell-off, uh, and I'm sure you see the numbers perhaps faster than I do <laughs> on a daily basis. Uh, this looks a very bit like uh, there was what you call a knee-jack reaction. Yes. Yes, uh, what we, based on initial, is always expected in the market before you do your proper analysis for some investors that have bought into some of these stocks two, three months ago, and they are still in the money. So you want to at least cap in terms of exit now and book some profit. So they some of them jumped the boat yesterday into the waters. Exactly. But something interesting <laughs> that we also observe is there was still a lot of interest for first buying bank. Buying interest. Yes, buying interest. For First Bank Holdings yesterday, I think we saw over about 110 million units. Yeah, in 150, terms of 115.5. 115. 
Yes, transaction. Massive. So as we saw, people were trying to book, book profits, book income. There were also some that saw opportunities that um, within the medium to long term, let me buy into this store. This is an opportunity I've been waiting. I could not come in at 14. I could not come in at 12. Now it's around, it's below 11 or around 11. Let me just acquire this stock and wait. If I believe in terms of their, um, their future performance. Fundamentals. Fundamentals, future were. performance. Mm. Then let me buy and hold now. Because and I, I know essentially, you're buying into the future. That's what equity is all about. Exactly. It's not like gold. You're yes. just buying into, into, into what you think the future value will really be. So it's about looking forward. Yes, it's about looking forward. So you forward think some and... folks are there sitting with some money, waiting for stock prices to come down, and they are buying. I wish I have such money and time. Yes, it's, um, you know, the market, was there sometimes we say when you miss that cycle, the rally. So when you feel that prices in terms of um, you, are, you are unable to join the, the upward the cycle, bar, yes. then sometimes you want to wait. And for some of them that have been on the sideline, they saw yesterday was an opportunity for those that uh, feel that they've been holding. Some people will have a target that, okay, First Bank will get to 15, 20 Naira, but, and they bought maybe at 5 Naira, for instance. So seeing it coming down from the 14 levels, coming down to the 12 levels, say I can still book some profit at this level. Mm -hmm. Or I can just, out, out of the, my current position, let me just reduce and book sell some down and sell down. Mm. We saw that in a lot of also tier 2 banks um, yesterday. Yeah, that's um, quite heavy with, FC, with uh, uh, FCMB, Diamond, Fidelity. Yeah. Yes, and when you, you feel, for instance, Fidelity, in terms of historical dividend payment, um, uh, payout ratio is around 50%. As, I think last year, as one of the highest dividend yield in terms of um, um, when you look at the analysis of what was paid out. So, and when you look at fundamentals too, in terms of the um, strategy the company is putting forward, for instance, even a Wema Bank with its um, current, with its alert um, um, mobile to acquire, um, to penetrate even the... Um, the um, the, using internet penetration, penetrating even the 60% of those that are unbanked in, 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 in Nigeria. So there are a lot of um, interesting things that are happening within the banking space. Um, for some of them are coming from a very low base effect. You, when you check what has happened in the last two years, the economy was really down, they booked significant um, impairment charges. And with the improvement we are seeing in the economy, for some of those loans that ab initio were not performing, they booked significant um, uh, provision. There's been a lot of provisions or impairment charges on. Some of them have been restructured. So we, we are positive in terms of our expectation. Though um, for uh, the area where for most of the banks last year, most of them enjoyed the high yield environment within the treasury because of high uh, uh, treasury bills rates. Um, this year, it's not that interesting as last year. But you also want to look at it. Last year, they were not comfortable, at least the fourth from first quarter, second um, first half, they were not comfortable to um, advance loans because uh, for most businesses, we're still struggling ac accessing FX and stuff like that. But with what has happened with the stability within the FX market, improvement in the economy, for some of the banks would begin to just review in terms of their loan policy, uh, especially understanding the particular market they want to play because that's one major thing that we feel most of the bank also needs to do. So Identify your niche understand how the market plays, understand the cash flow of that market, understand the risk and the, the opportunities in that market before you lend to the particular market. You may not be very, you may not have expertise in, in several sectors, but we should be able to know that this bank to this particular sector, just go there, they have uh, expertise that will be able to analyze the market, uh, analyze that sector before loan. Simply put, uh, simply right. put, don't be a jack of all trade. Exactly. Exactly. That's just simple. Don't be a jack of all trade and master of none. But again, let's look at the future of the Nigerian banks. How do you think the directors, the board of directors of all banks, including those that are solid, whatever, uh, will be reacting to this? Yes, I think um, for, for them, it's, uh, it's also... It has also helped them as a policy for them to have enough capital to reinvest. That's for most of the directors. Well, do you think they will be revising their dividend payout policies? Do you think that will be part of the uh, board meetings going on right now? Yeah. Um, for some of them that have been within a particular threshold and based on, based on our analysis, the, for most banks that have a, above 50% already fall within those that don't have limits. So you don't need to review. 
your dividend payout uh, policy. And, and it's time for those who are for without limits to oppress those who are within. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, we take yeah, opportunity this, this in is the time, market. This is, this is time if, to oppress. If I see it's also an opportunity for me, for someone that I don't believe because this bank will not be paying dividend, I can acquire the stock now. And if I'm willing to wait it out, maybe for next six months, 12 months, and we see an improvement in terms of financial performance. And Hold on a second. Of, You're telling me what the opportunities are, yes. even if one or two banks are, are fall within this directive of no dividend. Yes, there's also opportunity to acquire. So what you look for most of the banks, the NPL, what the NPL does is it drags down your bottom line, which is your profit. So because you have high impairment charges, your profit has reduced, and we're saying the little one that you're able to keep, don't pay it as a dividend. If they're able to restructure their loan, able to improve in terms of risk management, then the top line that has been performing, when you check their gross earnings in terms of how they're earning, if you see that they've been sustainable or they've, they've, been, uh, they've been growth within that space, then you, you are sure that if they're able to watch the non-performing loan, at the end of the day, you see significant jump in their bottom line. And perhaps in their and share price as well. Yes, and that translates, once you see the improvement in the EPS, it translates to improved dividend payment. So it's a double-edged sword? Yes. Very interesting. Very brilliant. Yes, that could be something in there. But let's take us, take us through your report of uh, the Afrivest Banking Report for 2018. Uh, does this uh, directive, this is the directive from the central bank, does it look like something taken out of that report? Did your report indicate the worrying, the level of concerns we should have for the NPL and the CER of the Nigeria's commercial banks? Yes, interesting. Um, the report, we tried to highlight some of the sectors that um, the banks uh, they, uh, were really exposed. And um, a major, a way to just tie that up rather than look at it per sector is that on a cumulative basis, if you know that your non-performing loan is at this level, I need you to get, have enough shock absorber to be able to absorb if Perhaps you can't recover this loan at the end of the day. You have enough reserve that you can write against the non-performing loan. So this is also a wake-up call for most of the banks that most investors will now be after checking your non-performing loan. How is it doing? Is it bridging the CBN rule? So once they begin to see that it's getting above the 5%, that sends a signal that um, this bank... Uh, may not be able to pay as much dividend as I'm anticipating. And also, for the directors, they will just try to also strengthen their risk management process. Very, and at the end of the day, um, it would dovetail positively to their bottom line. So you think the next uh, annual uh, shareholders meetings uh, will be more focused on these two subject matters, the capital adequacy ratio and non-performing loans? Yes, I think um, investors, okay, it's high time they uh, began to look at those other areas uh, because uh, rather than just get carried away in terms of the dividend payment that you get on the and uh, dividend payment that uh, you receive on annually, also the strength of that bank is also very key. So it, it should also be a topic for discussion in terms of what um, I know at the beginning of the year, uh, most of the, uh, the director or the board would, would give like a target, a target MPL that they want to achieve for that particular year, a target um, uh, in terms of the profit or margins that they want to achieve for that particular year, and also their capital adequacy ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we expect, part of what we expect to see this year is that um, with the confidence we're seeing in the equities market, for some of the banks that have been raising capital via euro bond as tier two capital, they need to come and also take advantage of this opportunity, either via rights issue. We've not seen any bank in the last four or five years raise right, either uh, come out to raise equity capital, either via rights issue or PO, so that they can strengthen their tier one capital. And okay, we saw Union Bank, um, excuse me for, uh, Union Bank raised last year, but we need to see more banks coming to raise more equity capital to strengthen their, their, um, their required or statutory capital. In terms of uh, risk assessment for commercial banks, uh, of course, this directive, as we all said, is not, has nothing to do with liquidity ratio. Uh, but then if, you're, if, what you, if, you're, if, if you're, your capital adequacy ratio and your non-performing loans are beginning to weigh heavily on you, 
then your liquidity ratio, uh, then just, that just might be a very soft knock on the door of your liquidity somehow. Uh, yeah, may not um, directly, uh, may not necessarily lead to um, affecting your liquidity ratio in terms of meeting up with your obligation. And that's why when you check, you do like a deposit and maturity analysis of most of the banks, you discover that even the best bank, the top banks, have like maturity, uh, deposit maturity ratio about 80% of their, um, of their funds will mature within 60 days. But because you know uh, of the velocity in terms of the activity that happens, once there's no run, you are able to manage that liquidity. Most people are necessary to take out their fund from the bank. So um, what most people will also be looking at is the asset liability management of banks. So you get your deposits. If it's um, the average maturity is six months, then when you also check in terms of your asset, what's the average um, duration of some of the loans that you have also given out. You also sent a signal in terms of how you meet your obligation. And that's why also they have a window that the CBN has also provided that perhaps you have short-term needs. The discount um, win CBN window is there for you to at least take in short-term funds, pending when maybe your liquid asset you can also sell off to be able to meet your obligation. So in terms of um, the risk management of the bank, I think for us, I think it's um, above average but we still need to do a lot within that space. What do you think the central bank, and this is taking us all the way back to the beginning of the conversation about the financial system stability. Uh, perhaps this is some measure of stress test? Yeah, it's uh, like um, precaution. Uh, and most times we always, we've always said that maybe the CBN is reactive, but this one is they are being proactive trying to, maybe a lot of the banks would have been submitting their full year result to them for approval. For 2017. Uh, yes, so we, we uh, depending on what has been proposed, maybe that's part of what might have informed this, re, um, re, notifying the market again that this policy was released in 2014, and now trying to narrow it down such that if I allow you to pay this dividend out at this time, it may affect your capital Adequacy so the central bank. Forward. So the central bank. None of the banks have released their 2017 numbers, and just a week or two before that, yes, the central bank flagged off this. Yes, right. That I'm just. This is just to remind you that this policy. Meaning, the, the regulator, the central bank, has seen the numbers. It's not impossible for some of the yes. uh, banks. It's been announced that they've submitted to the. To uh, the central bank. Central yes. Bank so, so looking at those numbers, the regulator must have said, uh, "Hold on a second. We need to flag this quickly." before the money starts going out. Yeah, exactly. And also to maybe try and douse maybe some of the back and forth maybe within the, uh, with the bank uh, managers. I got it. As to whether you can pay this or you can't pay that. Yes. So that's why the, the, the threshold of the CBN requirements on dividend payout ratio is very, very important. Ayodeji, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming here. Thanks for uh, having me. For clarifying this up very well. And a nice job with that at, uh, table there about who, uh, who gets a green, who gets a red, who gets an orange, something like amber. Uh, there is all there. You may go online and check it out.